So as you just saw, I actually brewed tonight's cup by using the Skrillex method. That being the dub steeping that happened at the end. I'd say it worked out pretty well. Mm. <sighs> Bubby. So good morning, Ginge, or at least I presume it's morning. I know it's 8 a.m. in Moscow when I upload these by midnight here. Though that doesn't necessarily mean that you watch them when I upload them. So I guess rather it's good morning, afternoon, evening, festivus, whenever you watch this thing, let it be a good time. Actually, wait, you're watching my vlogs. Obviously it's a good time. <sighs> oh, the humility. So I enjoyed your last vlog. I'm glad that you're having fun in Moscow. And somehow I'm not at all surprised that one of the first things that you would do when moving to a new city is seek out a modern art museum. <laughs> museum? Museum. Museum? Knowledge gaps. Some of those exhibitions were really cool. I have to say, of the ones that you mentioned, my favorite was the record and playback system with I Love You. It actually reminds me of a website that I believe is called The Nicest Place on the Internet that has a similar premise, but it's just based around hugs. I'll put in the doobly-doo, so if you ever need a spontaneous internet hug, just click the link I put down there. Oh, and you asked what book I was reading. I'm actually rereading Fahrenheit 451 because recently I became aware of the fact that I've been saying since probably freshman year of high school that it's my favorite novel, but then again, up until right now, I hadn't actually reread it since freshman year of high school. And as my tastes in a lot of other things have changed since then, I thought it'd be interesting to see if my tastes in literature have changed as well. And also the Nerd Fighter Book Club, obviously. But I have to say though, so far I'm loving it. <laughs> and if things keep going as well as they have been, I have a feeling that it's going to keep its well-earned spot at the top of my book list. But moving on, since you mentioned arty things in your last vlog, I figured I'd mirror that in my own little way and discuss some music-y things in mine. You might remember from my last vlog that I alluded to attending rehearsals as part of a day in the life. And you also might recall that Emphys and I are both in the Summer 2 musical review on campus. Now that I've started participating and attending rehearsals, I've gotten to know a lot more about what's in the review, and I have to say I'm really, really excited about it. But to start with, I might as well mention the most exciting piece of news. For the first time in my recent musical theater career, I am... Actually, I'm gonna stop right there. Martin Freeman says it better. I'm not a- You heard the overanalyzing hobbit correctly. <laughs> I am not a practicer of the world's oldest profession in any of the numbers in this review. <laughs> in terms of musical theater, I am definitely moving up in the world. But back to the show itself. So the show features a lot of music from off-Broadway musicals and lesser-known composers who, in my opinion, deserve a lot more recognition than they have. And even though it's not classic Broadway and what you think of when you think of musical theater, it's still really, really good stuff. A lot of the songs have really, really complex and sometimes interestingly dissonant sounding harmonies, which are just kind of, you know, intriguing and work with the content of the songs really, really well. And also a lot of the numbers are small ensemble numbers, which I really tend to love because you can get those on-ducing moments and harmonies while still being able to feature the voices of the individual people in the ensemble. One thing I have noticed is that a lot of the songs have a generally angsty feel to them. A lot of the songs are about being 20-something and missed opportunities and not knowing what to do with your life. And granted, that is something that we can all relate to. I mean, at our age, things can be very nerve-wracking and we have a lot of decisions to make for our future. But after a certain point, it just stops being relatable and just starts getting really, really angsty. Actually, the combination of that angsty feel and the obscurity of the songs we're performing has caused the P staff to refer to the show as a hipster douchey musical review. I feel very flail covered all of a sudden. Aw, oh, man. I hate when this happens. Carly Rae Jepsen! <sighs> Whew, I'm back. Oh. Good old cardigan. But despite that, or because of that, if you've become a hipster since you went to Moscow, the show is definitely going to be really, really good, and you'll really enjoy it. Well, if you go to see it. You don't have to go see it, but, you know. You should totally see it. It's gonna be really, really awesome. Also, this weekend is going to be pretty much the best weekend that ever existed. This Saturday is the Gentleman of the Road stopover that Emphys and I are attending, and it's gonna be amazing. Just to give you a, a taste of the amazingness that I expect it to be, this is what the tickets look like. They're, they're little passport booklets, and when, when you open it, the actual ticket, it's a hologram. 
<laughs> I don't know if footage from that will be in Monday's vlog, but it'll definitely appear in a vlog sometime next week, so no worries. You will get to live vicariously through my flip. As I hope to do with yours once you get more time to traipse around the city. But take your time with that and make the awesome thoughts from places video that I know you will. One more thing that I forgot to mention earlier about your punishment. One thing that I would really appreciate would be the inclusion of English subtitles for the stuff that you say in Russian, just because otherwise it won't mean anything to me at all. I think that covers it for today, um, so I'm going to say good night from my perspective, and see you tomorrow! Cheers! There's no tea left. <laughs> Disappointment.